can't tell me that because you don't know what I'm saying. But this is Bob Ambrogi, and uh, welcome to this Pacer Pro webinar. Um, I'm going to be moderating the discussion today. And uh, so before we get started, let me just quickly tell you who I am and then introduce our panelists, and then we're going to get right into the discussion. Uh, there is a chat feature here, and that's how we'll be taking questions. Uh, we'd love to have your questions throughout this program. Uh, I'll be watching the chat as will the other uh, speakers. And uh, if you have a question uh, at any point in the program, please go ahead and send it. We'll also, of course, leave time at the end for your questions. Uh, so I'm Bob Ambrosi. I am a, a, a lawyer up in Massachusetts. I also am a writer, a blogger. I write a lot about legal technology um, for the um, for my own blog, I cover legal technology for the ABA Journal and other publications. Uh, I got to know Pacer Pro almost two years ago now, uh, when I actually wrote about it for the ABA Journal. Uh, I hadn't worked with it at all before that time, but I, I was very impressed with what I saw. I, I wrote about it in the ABA Journal. You can find that up on the ABA Journal website, the review that I did. And uh, subsequent to writing that, I I, I got to know uh, some of the folks who work there better. I had a number of conversations with them, learned more about what they're doing, and especially uh, Gavin, the CEO of the company, talked to him quite a bit. And uh, it, it came to pass that uh, they invited me to serve on, on uh, as a member of their advisory board, and, and, and I accepted that. Uh, I think it's a really interesting company with some really interesting uh, plans. Uh, it, it, for what it's already doing and what it, what it continues to want to do. Uh, it, it's already uh, evolved quite a bit from the company that I first saw uh, when I reviewed it uh, back in early 2014, uh, in particular with the launch of its uh, uh, electronic notification uh, service that we're going to be talking about today. Um, and uh, we're going to... Uh, the, you know, this this is a service that uh, basically lets you. Well, Gavin's going to explain it in more details, but this is their free look PDF service uh, that uh, gives you the PDFs moments after the uh, notice of electronic filing arrives from the federal court. Okay. Uh, it's proven to be a very valuable service for a number of firms that have adopted it. And we're going to hear uh, from some of those firms today. So uh, that's who I am, and let me get on to. Introducing our panelists today. Uh, we're going to have panelists from three different law firms uh, that have used this service. And, and uh, each, the people from these firms are, are, play very different roles in their firm. So it's going to be a really interesting discussion, I think. Uh, so let me begin by introducing them, and then uh, we're going to move on. First of all, I'd like to introduce Dale Jaklewski. Dale is the library director at Quinn Emanuel Urquhart and Sullivan in Los Angeles. And I guess I should say he, he says he's more or less the library director because their, their, their titles are a little loose, I guess, at the firm. But <laughs> he has uh, been their library director uh, for the last 10 years uh, and has worked uh, in library positions at Morrison Forrester uh, and uh, in, in corporate roles and at firms in Florida as well. Uh, so. Uh, Dale, why don't you say hello so we can hear your voice. Hi. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Dale. Great. Great. Thanks for joining us, Dale. Sure, no problem. And next, let me introduce Evan Maluzzo. Evan is the managing clerk at Schulte, Roth, and Zabel, Zabel in New York. Uh, Evan uh, has over 18 years of experience in advising attorneys on procedural matters and determining the best formula in approaching certain aspects of litigation from commencement to disposition of an action. He has an active role in reviewing legal documentation for proper format before service and filing, and he coordinates and manages service and filing of documents. In addition, he oversees the in-house docketing and calendar database for all active manners, matters and manages a busy litigation calendar and ensures the legal staff receives proper notifications of upcoming court matters and deadlines. So, uh, Evan, uh, welcome to this webinar. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Happy to have you here. And uh, 
last but not least of our panelists, let me introduce Peggy Wallace. Peggy is legal secretary of Sussman Godfrey in Houston. Uh, for the past 18 years, uh, she has been there, and until his retirement over a year ago, she was the assistant to Lee Godfrey, the main partner at the firm. She has written several training manuals for the firm, teaches classes for both administrative assistants and legal secretaries. Prior to joining Sussman Godfrey, she was the secretary to the general counsel of an independent oil company, and she has over 30 years of experience in total as a legal secretary and legal assistant. She's a graduate of the University of North Carolina and began her career teaching college prep English to high school juniors and seniors and also working in real estate before she became a legal secretary. Um, Peggy, have you joined us? I have joined you. You have joined us. Very good. Well, yes. welcome. Glad to have you here. Thank you. Uh, and then, last but not least, I want to just introduce uh, Gavin McCrane. You heard him speaking earlier in this program. Gavin is the CEO and co-founder of Pacer Pro. He's a lawyer in San Francisco, and he got the idea for Pacer Pro uh, out of his practice as a civil litigator in San Francisco. He's a graduate of the uh, University of California, Davis, and University of the Pacific St. George School of Law. And uh, before we get started with our, our panelists, I'm going to turn this over to Gavin. He's going to give you a, a quick introduction to the service. And he's done doing that. We're going to return to our panelists and discuss a little bit more uh, what we talked about. So, Gavin? Okay. Thank you very much, Bob. And again, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Um, I'm going to give you a very brief tour of the Pacer Pro system. Um, Pacer Pro really, in today's iteration, is focused on case and document management. When you log into Pacer Pro, you land on the My Cases page. And what this is, is a collection of cases that you're either directly involved in, meaning that you're in the attorney of record representing a party, or it's third-party litigation that you want to be able to keep track of. And rather than having multiple different places where you look for the information, it's all contained here on a single page. Uh, as Bob was talking about most recently, we have now begun to deliver what are known as free look documents. So when you're an attorney involved in litigation, you get emails that look like this whenever you, opposing counsel or the court, files a new document in the case. And what it does is it gives a bare description of what was filed, and then there's a hyperlink that will actually take you to the document or documents. And depending on how many documents there are, this can take quite a while. Uh, one thing to keep in mind with regards to these filings is they come in day, night, weekend, et cetera. And so it's easy to get backed up when there's multiple filings or lots of activity going on. And what we're really trying to do is make sure that the stakeholders, i.e. the attorneys involved in the cases, the support staff, co-counsel, anybody who needs access to the documents is getting them as real time as possible. And so here's an example of an email that comes directly after the court's notice. Again, kind of a brief description of what was filed you scroll down to the bottom of the page and you can see that attached to the email are all the PDFs that were filed in this particular uh, docket entry. And you have them all here and you can quickly review them. Uh, attorneys and support staff love this service. It just is a, a great uh, stress relief not having to do this stuff yourself and not having to go through the hassle of clicking the links, which from mobile, mobile devices oftentimes don't work. Uh, you might get the first page, you might not get anything at all. So it's a really big relief to have the documents here. The other thing it can help do, other than reducing overhead, which is important, is it also helps reduce law firms' overall PACER bills. And having audited 15 AM100 law firm bills, about 20% of your PACER bills result in people downloading the same document more than once. And by taking advantage of this service and now getting the free look documents sent directly to the attorneys as well as available online with PACER Pro, uh, which you can access from anywhere, we're really helping law firms bite down um, significant chunks of their PACER bill. Um, Pacer Pro, just to give you a real sense, gives you quick, ready access to your docket sheets. So you can see here, one-click access to the Apple versus Samsung case, the docket sheet pops right up, even though there's over 3,300 entries. Um, the way Pacer Pro works, to the extent we have to pull back new information, we use our client's Pacer credentials. So if we're going to update the docket now, uh, you'd incur your normal Pacer fees, but what we're looking at here is the cached version of the docket sheet. <coughs> Um, with respect to any new documents we have to pull back that haven't already made it into the system, you also incur your normal PACER charges, but to the extent anybody's pulled it back, it doesn't matter if it's from Latham or MOFO, once it's in our system, it's made freely available to everybody else. Um, some nice features, you can quickly flip the order of the docket sheet from oldest to newest. You can see what's most recently filed. You've got an advanced 
search bar that allows you to take these large docket sheets and quickly whittle down and find the particular interest, entries you may be interested in. So one thing I like to use in this example, partner walks in and says, I need to see the order which dissolved the preliminary injunction in Apple v. Samsung. Well, we can begin to enter identifying language, order, sign, that's how they do it in the Northern District of California. Uh, the judge is named Lucy Coe and preliminary injunction. Hit return. By default, it's a Boolean search. We also allow proximity searching and exclusionary searching. We just allow searching across the text of the docket entries right now. Of course, we're going to start allowing people to search the text, the underlying documents down the road. We went from 3,000 plus results down to 14. I quickly scroll down the page. The extent of docket entries got uh, PDFs that underlie it. It'll say click to view documents. I click it. A side panel opens up. The best way to think about it is a shopping cart, i.e. where you're either getting ready to view the documents or download them. This document is already in our system, so it's now available and free. And there's your PDF. You can do other interesting stuff along the lines of looking for documents filed by a particular party in a case. Here I'm going to look for the words filed in Apple to appear within three of each other. As you can see here, this now just returns all the entries filed by Apple. Uh, there's still too many results. You can begin to run searches in conjunction and really begin to narrow down the total number of results you're looking at. One final feature on the docket page that's really nice um, for folks to get used to is you have the ability to do bulk downloads, meaning you can pull back multiple different docket entries and all their attachments simultaneously. You can see here we're about to pull back 27 documents. And it's a very fast operation. You can also share uh, electronically to copies of the docket sheet with other team members, so that's also very nice. Uh, running searches on Pacer Pro, uh, we provide direct access to each of the district courts, each of the bankruptcy courts, and we are now uh, beginning to tap into the case locator search, which will allow us to do nationwide profiling of litigants, uh, whether it's an individual or it's a business, uh, in a really easy to use fashion with lots of nice filters that allow you to kind of quickly get after the information. To run a normal search on the district courts, you can just type in the data where you're looking for. Uh, PACER allows you to search by an attorney's name or by a party's name, so you can enter that information here. PACER doesn't yet allow you to search by um, a judge name. You can also reduce the number of search results by nature of suit. Uh, the date filing range here allows you to kind of narrow down when the case may have been opened uh, to keep track of your PACER charges. You enter your normal client code here, and this is what will appear in your normal PACER bill. Uh, one final bit here. Unlike PACER, uh, we preserve the last 25 searches that you ran. So if you needed to go back and take a look at some earlier results, you can. And you can see the way we return our results is a lot more user-friendly than what PACER uh, does. Oftentimes, you'll get multiple hits for the same case because somebody had a different role in the case. We aggregate that data. We also show you who the judge is, the nature of suit, and the total number of docket entries. Um, it's very easy to follow the case. You simply click follow. If I wanted to share the docket from the results page, I can do that as well. Uh, Bob, I think that is about it in a nutshell. Yeah, there's a little discussion in chat here about is there a way to assign CM numbers to the searches? Um, I wonder if that's something you can show. Sure. No, that, that's absolutely easy thing to do. Um, and actually, that gets into a couple other points here. So you have the ability right here with the client code to enter your regular case matter number. And this is what's going to appear on your PACER bill. So, And because we use your PACER credentials, if you've set PACER up on the back end to require that people add a client code in a specific format, we're going to have the same requirement because we're only acting as your proxy logging into PACER and streamlining those operations. I should uh, mention that one of the really neat new features that we have in connection with the ability to send out the PDFs to the attorneys receiving the ECF notices. You also have the ability with PACER Pro to send out all the emails with the PDFs attached through a distribution list. And so it's really easy to do that. As you see here, I clicked on the distribution list, I hit edit, and now I can add some members of my team to start receiving the free look PDFs. And to the extent, you know, if you're the secretary or paralegal, assign the job of setting up the um, trial teams, but you don't necessarily need to get pinged with every single email. You can turn off your own settings so that you're not getting the updates or the free look PDFs.
you know, but you still would have access to the complete up-to-date docket sheet whenever you needed it. And you can also put in your client code there too for your um, for That's those correct. cases, right? Gotcha. Thanks, Evan. Yeah, no, you can certainly do that sure. right here. So you've got the client code option, and you can just enter it. So. And then that's set for the case, so you don't have to worry about, you know, constantly getting pestered with the case number popping up, or sorry, the client matter number popping up. So, um, Gavin, thanks for that. And I, I'd like to try and uh, start turn to our panelists at this point. And um, what I really want to start with is asking you uh, to each talk a little bit about uh, why you brought Pacer Pro on in the first place in your firm and kind of what was what was the pain point that, that you were hoping to address with Pacer Pro and and, and how did it do that? Uh, Peggy, I wonder if I could start with you. Okay. Well, in our case, Gavin's time when you sift it out perfect. Uh, probably because I have worked for Mr. Godfrey so long, I get involved in a lot of administrative things. And our librarian brought me our Pacer bill. And she said, this thing is growing by leaps and bounds every month. She said, can you look at it and see if you can figure out what's costing us so much? And so after looking it over, one of the obvious things was I was seeing the same docket number over and over and over. So people were pulling the same document. They weren't just using the free look. They would pull it again and again. And so just about that time, Gavin called our librarian. So she came back and she said, well, I have this man that says he has a way that we can improve on this bill. Would you like to talk to him? <laughs> so why not? So after I talked to Gavin and he started explaining to me how as soon as anybody pulls it from through Pacer Pro, it goes on Pacer Pro's server. We can thereafter continue to, prove, to pull free. It was worth it to me to present it to our management I actually gave it to the HR director who went to our computer committee. And based on that alone, they wanted to look at it. So once we instituted it, when the next quarter came through, the librarian once again brought me the bill to look at. We had gone down by about one third. So that by itself was sufficient for us. But even more interesting to us, and especially to me as a secretary, was when he came back and showed me the new PDFs. because. We have just about gone paperless. There's no way any law firm is ever going to make it, but we're close. So anytime an ECF comes in, our billing attorney secretary is required to download the document, all of the exhibits, rename the main document based on our protocol, put it into an email, and send it to everyone on our trial team, and then drag it into Matter-Centric, which is our document management system. If you have never tried to download 44 exhibits plus a main document, you just haven't lived yet. It can take forever. And so now when it comes in, we've checked the timing. It's an average of about three minutes. So you file a document or a document's filed in your case. Three minutes later, there it says Pacer Pro. The naming convention is so close to ours that basically all we do is drop his document on the desktop, fix the naming, and we're ready to send out the document and all of those exhibits right then. But the nice part is if it happens to be after hours, a weekend or whatever, our attorneys can see it. It won't have our protocol, but they can see what the document is. They can read it and they can do it as many times as they want to free. They can email it to each other. They can discuss it. And because we have some heavy rainmakers here who have lots of cases, there are some secretaries who bog down all day with ECFs. We actually have administrative assistants here who spend a lot of their day doing nothing but downloading ECFs, you know, changing the name, putting them back into an email, sending them back to the secretary. So that has been virtually eliminated. So the time saved by the secretaries here on that one feature made it worth it to us for Pace Pro. That's really interesting. Um, Evan, let me turn to you. I, I, I know that I, I've talked to you before, and I, you, you have uh, somewhat of a similar story, a, a little bit different, but uh, some of the same issues were existing in your firm. 
Yes, uh, two main sticking points. Um, the first one is what we used to do is when I, I would have my name and my office's name, their email addresses on every case and every attorney's ECF account. So it would come into us. We would have to manipulate the um, ECF hit. So we take out all the attorney's email addresses at the bottom, clean it up, and then download, attach the document, and forward it to the team. Now, not every member of that team has an ECF account because they would have to file a notice of appearance. So your junior associate, who is the one who's probably um, responsible for first reviewing the documents that come in, um, would rely on us. So with Pacer Pro and with the distribution list, we eliminated that. Um, also, we follow over 400 plus cases that we have no involvement in. So with Pacer Pro, it allowed us to set those cases up and automatically Pacer Pro forwards it to the attorneys. I reached out to many of them. They love it. Um, they, they love more the ECF notification hits with the PDFs. I was actually, I had an e-filing a couple weeks ago. It was late at night. It was about a little before midnight. We had a deadline. And I texted him once I uh, e-filed the document. And I'm like, did you get the Pacer Pro hit? And he's like, yes. He's like, it's awesome. It's cool. And considering I know this lawyer well, he is very hard to please. And for those simple words to come across was good enough. So this has been a godsend for us. So, th so these are cases that your cases that your lawyers are not involved in, but they're following because they might involve a, a client or a firm or something like that, where they're they're interested in what's going on. Right, and since we don't have ECF credentials in some of those courts, where we wouldn't put put um put us on as you know a case of interest, um, which we like in Southern District um, of New York, if you know, almost every lawyer, every litigator has an account. They could just put a case of interest on their ECF account and get hits as they come in. But uh, for Delaware, for instance, which is really difficult um, to get anything out of, um, we can just automatically follow it on a daily basis for them. And we're cut out as the – because all we played really at some point was the middle man, middle woman, person, what have you. Um, and that's cut out. Um, but, you know, they, they, in those cases that they don't have the ECF hit um, automatically, they still have to come back to us. Or I set them up with their Pacer Pro account. They have their own. They can go in and just click on the notifications and get them themselves. Self-sufficiency. Great. So, uh, Dale, you're a library director uh, at Quinn Emanuel. What got you interested in Pacer Pro and how have you used it? I would echo Peggy's first point, uh, the cost savings. Um, that was the first um, thing that appealed to me, and I took it to my uh, COO. Uh, it's sort of like pulling teeth to get uh, them to approve uh, new subscriptions. So the big selling point for my boss was um, the cost savings. And because um, we did have, at the, at the bills, and we did have those multiple downloads. And also Gavin took a look and uh, agreed the analysis. Um, so yeah, so in the uh, so my boss is happy, which is good. Um, the attorneys love the ECF alerts and the tracking, um, and the paralegals love the bulk download. Uh, so I haven't had any negative feedback at all. I mean, literally nobody. And people want to buy drinks for Gavin when he's in town. So it's, uh, <laughs> really, uh, pretty happy with it. I mean, it's it's I mean it's like a it's like where have you been all our lives? So um, what, what have you seen in terms of the cost issue since you've been using it? About uh, 25 to 30%. Yep. That, that's a lot of drinks for Gavin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I can't uh, – I'm pretty happy with it. Um, and uh, everyone I talk to, like I said, uh, is pretty pleased with it. I wonder if any of you uh, see a – a risk management aspect to this, you know, probably some of our some of the people in the audience have heard about the case uh, earlier this year, uh, the Sidley Austin the case in which the Federal Circuit uh, kind of chastised the law firm of Sidley Austin for missing a, a deadline to file an uh, appeal uh, in a forty million dollar uh, case, uh, largely because the firm didn't read a, an ECF notice that came in from the lower court and missed the deadline. Uh, you know, I, I think that's got 
certainly some some lawyers <laughs> paying more attention to these things. So, do any of you see, I guess, you know, what we call a risk management aspect of this? Well, that was one of the other reasons why we did get it. Um, uh, my um, my boss, the chief operating officer, is a former managing attorney, and he knew the risks associated with uh, not uh, getting a notifications or even reading them, um, for that matter, when they do come in. Um, it did make us more alert to when when things do come in. Um, and what happens with Peso Pro is that if the text does change in um, a docket entry, we do get notice. So if it did come in and it was wrong or incorrect, I, I read the opinion, I read the, the, the news on it, and later on that day, you know, the supervisor comes in and the docket folks and they change it, of course we're not going to know. So Gavin just pulled up. You could tell. I get them all the time. It's great. Um, and that is a, that's a, one of the other things why uh, we, we went with Pacer Pro. Um, so since you implemented this, uh, how has the, how have the attorneys in your firm uh, accepted it? Uh, what's their reaction been to it? Um, and, and how's the how's the rollout gone? Um, Dale, how about you? Uh, like I said, um, there's uh, I've not had one person say anything negative about the product. Uh, it's all positive feedback. And um, the rollout was pretty straightforward. I just sent out a broadcast email saying, look, we have a new subscription. Here's the uh, you know, uh, instructions, pretty straightforward instructions. The vast majority of people um, were able to do that without uh, any follow-up. But of course, you know, certain people, you know, uh, have problems for whatever reasons. But uh, yeah, so um, our rollout was very simple. And it was very, it was trouble free, more or less. Yeah. Peggy, how about for your firm? Peggy? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry, how about at, at your firm? What was the rollout like and how did the attorneys uh, receive it? Well, we tend to take things slowly, so we only, it took us several months for them to decide to do it. And like I said, it took them three months to see the first pacer bill. Once they did, they loved it. But it was love at first sight when I saw the PDFs. I have not heard a negative word since then. Okay. Uh, and, and Evan, how about you? Uh, the reception was awesome. Um, I rolled out a couple of um, initiatives this past year. Um, and there were complaints about each one of those other ones, but with Pacer Pro, I sent out an email, told them about the service. Um, I signed them up if they wanted to, just so, you know, attorneys don't like change uh, for the most part. But I said, let me sign you up. I have no problem. I signed them up. They started asking to sign up themselves. It's been great. And, you know, not hearing anything is always good news. I learned that a long time ago. So, well, that is one thing we did. We signed everybody up at once. We didn't ask individuals if they wanted to be signed up. So yeah. everyone started receiving everything at the same time. So once they got it, they all loved it. Okay, good. Um, I, I, I should probably point out to watching watching the chat go by, and I think I think Anna just did this, but there's uh, the Anna who's answering lots of questions in chat is uh, uh, is Anna McGrain who uh, works with Pacer Pro. Uh, and she's, I guess she's sort of the silent panelist here today. We're not hearing from her, but she's participating as well. Um, I think, um, Bob, actually, Anna's going to um, join us at the very end to talk about um, folks who are interested in signing up, how to go about that. And then we also have a special promotion that we're offering up until October 15th of this year. Um, so yeah. she will there, be joining there us. There have been some questions about pricing, and I've been intentionally ignoring those only because I know you're yep. going to address this a, a little bit later in the program. Um, no, you know, just to kind of um, uh, chat about two points you raised earlier, you know, having the documents go directly to the attorneys, you know, I've been in communication with actually a, a number of, you know, partners at different firms, and what they say is when they get the PDF sent directly to them, it gives them peace of mind, and they're oftentimes five or ten times more likely, this is words that they use, to read the, uh, the PDF and get a better understanding of what's going on now that they're coming directly to them in real time. Uh, and then with regards to rollouts, 
it was interesting from our perspective working with each of the firms. You know, Quinn Emanuel um, is very, I would say, self-reliant. Uh, uh, so when Dale sent out, you know, his emails to the groups, you know, the attorneys and or their paralegals got on it right away because that's just the culture at the firm there. You know, I worked closely with Evan to get the initial um, group of people set up, and then after that, Evan's really taken the lead. And then with respect to um, Suspen, we started first with a group of um, secretaries and paralegals, and once uh, we saw that first quarter bill come in, you know, we started to roll it out from Y to all the attorneys as well. And then we did the uh, ECF, uh, which was a little bit challenging just because of the scope of the uh, litigation that Suspen's involved in. And there was more than 600 plus ECF credentials we had to corral and uh, get together, but uh, that was a relatively painless process. And again, it was you know, working uh, very closely together to make sure that everything turned out the right way because it is uh, always important to us to make sure that our clients are well taken care of. Gavin, while we have you, there's a question here on what happens when the Pacer Pro, uh, what happens when the ECF notice has no document attached? Sure. So currently, <clears throat> what we do is we don't send an email out for that. We're going to change that um, in the near future. And so what you'll get is an email generated by Pacer Pro with the description of what was filed, but, but you know, big, bold letters, you know, this was generated by Pacer Pro. This is not an actual court document. And it's just a way, you know, for folks who want to have completeness in their DMS to have all the documents there. And again, you know, oftentimes it's easier to read um, stuff that we um, clean up from Pacer than it is reading it from Pacer. I mean, if you take a look, there's a lot of information you get from Pacer that's extraneous, and what we're going to do is really curtail it down just to the kind of the main points. And sometimes these descriptions from the court, particularly for text-only orders, can be extremely long. And so our ability to kind of clean up and make the text more readable, uh, again, you're going to have happy campers when it comes to the attorneys and support staff. I wonder if you could talk a little bit more. I'm not sure it's entirely clear uh, how the differences uh, – Differences between the email notices that are coming from the court and the email notices that are coming from you, and who gets what? Sure. So, and Evan and uh, Peggy, uh, you know, you guys obviously have uh, it, it as much, if not more, experience than I do with this. But um, when you're an attorney involved in a case, and not every single attorney involved in the case um, is going to get one of these, but when you're an attorney involved in the case and you have a set of ECF credentials, like for example, I have ECF credentials for the California Northern District and the California Northern Bankruptcy Court. Whenever something gets filed in one of my cases, I get an email that looks just like this, that's got a description that is kind of generically created by PACER as you're uploading the document through its ECF service. And then you get a hyperlink that takes you out to the actual court website where you either will see the document or you'll see a series of links that take you to the actual PDF, et cetera. And then you have to go on and download and label them and file them and then distribute them to your team. What we're doing here at Pacer Pro is we um, have a unique Pacer Pro email address created for each Pacer Pro member. That Pacer Pro unique email address gets added to the attorney's ECF credentials for the various courts they're involved in. Now, when the documents come in, you can create a distribution list to make sure that everybody on that particular trial team, you know, typically a series of lawyers and paralegals and support staff, will get the documents as well. But then we're also, you know, able in the background, you know, for firms who are interested in this, and there's a number of them who are doing this now, uh, deliver the documents directly to a docketing department or a records department simultaneously. So there's a lot less kind of repetitive work being done by multiple different groups is all being taken care of on the back end by Pacer Pro. Gavin, the, the reason the PDFs are so important to us is like you said, you are looking at a hyperlink. When you click on that hyperlink, what you're going to see is if there's 50 exhibits in one document, you're going to see numbers 1 through 50. And if you want to see what's there, you've got to click in most courts. Now, some of them will let you download it all. But most courts, you have to click on each and every one of those documents and download it. But if it's already in a PDF, you can pick and choose what you want to open. And you can open a PDF in a tiny portion of the time it takes to download just one document through that hyperlink. So our attorneys typically will not look at the hyperlinks because it's too time-consuming. That's why they have always waited for us to download them, PDF them, put them in an email, and then forward it to the trial team. So what Gavin has done is he saves us all of that downloading time. And like I said, even his naming convention comes so close to ours 
It only takes a minute for us to pop it off onto the desktop, rename it, pop it back on email, and send it out. But the attorneys will actually open these PDFs at home at night or in the wee hours of the morning without being concerned, because we have some attorneys here. If they see one come through, they want you to stop whatever you're doing right then, download it, and get it to them. But unfortunately, we all support three to four attorneys. And so sometimes it's virtually impossible to do that at the moment because you may be in the midst of a filing for somebody else. Now, I'm assuming, and maybe I'm wrong in doing this, that, 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 there's, that, one of the, that the attorney of record is going to continue to get the ECF notices yes. uh, directly from the court as right. well as the notices that are coming from PACER in some cases. Is that how you're doing it or not? Yes. That is correct. Uh, Here at Sussman, every attorney who's on the case gets it, and the secretary to every attorney who is on the case gets it. The secretary who is the secretary to what we call the billing attorney, or the attorney who's responsible for the case, is the one whose responsibility it is to download everything and circulate it. So the difference between asking an attorney to look at this at 10 o'clock at night by downloading 50 documents or opening an email that has a bunch of PDFs you can just click on is a tremendous amount of time. And the amount of time it saves us from downloading and then saving and naming is unbelievable. That's why I said we have admin assistants here who's a very large portion of their job was just taking all these ECFs, turning them into PDFs, and sending them back to the secretaries for distribution. Yeah, and again, you know, we're not trying to do anything to interfere with the ECF notices. You know, most attorneys uh, will continue to want to get the ECF notice from the court and then expect the PDFs to be coming in from PACER Pro afterwards. And that just replicates the traditional workflow, which is ECF notice comes in, secretary paralegal gets a copy of that. It's then their job to go online, download, label, file. Um, so we streamlined that process. And then also there's the you know, secondary players, the docketing department, the records department, who also want to kind of keep these records. And so they're relying on other people to make sure they get pushed to them. Uh, so again, we solved that problem. I just lost my audio for a couple minutes there. I don't know if I'm back. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, no, we can hear you fine, Bob. Okay, I wish I just was gone for a second. <laughs> Did I miss anything good? Um, so, no, it, you know, Peggy just got done answering your question, uh, yeah. talking about how things work at Tuspin. You know, the attorneys continue to get their ECF notices for the cases they're involved in. The secretaries continue to get the ECF notices because they are always put on as a secondary recipient. But now, rather than having to have individuals, human beings, go on, click and download and pull these documents back, we're doing it all for them, which has freed up a tremendous amount of time that's otherwise spent clicking and downloading. So I guess I, what I was think, asking that partly in the context of, of those text-only emails uh, mm -hmm. that, that come out. I, presumably, somebody uh, at the firm is, uh, you know, of record is still still getting those, uh, even mm -hmm. if you're not distributing those. Yes, and we're we, you know we all again still get those. Every ECF still goes to every attorney and every secretary. And trust me, the billing secretary opens every one of those ECFs and looks at it. And she would know immediately if she didn't have something from Pacer Pro in the next three minutes because she would, it would still be her job to circulate it if nothing came. If for some reason there was a problem with Pacer Pro and an ECF didn't come in, she would still open it and circulate it. Okay. But, Piggy, that hasn't happened, so. <laughs> that has not happened. I was giving you a worst-case scenario. Yeah. We, we have not yet failed to get an, an email from Pacer Pro. I think the longest time that we've clocked since that first week or so is you know, three to five minutes. Yep. Yeah. And I think a critical point you made, Peggy, is that these notices can come in at any hour of the day or night, uh, and uh, that, that not every firm is somebody uh, working on the secretarial staff, at least, at every hour of the day or night, uh, and uh, the PACER service sends them out no matter when they come in. It really doesn't matter. Well, unfortunately, we do have attorneys who work at 3 a.m., so they're really happy to see them come in, but I'm happy that I'm not here doing it. Right. Yeah. Uh, Evan, is, that, is it similar at your firm in terms of uh, how you're handling the email distribution lists and, and who's continuing, the attorneys who are continuing to get the uh, 
ECF notices versus the PACER Pro notices? Yeah, we thought that them getting duplic duplicative sort of emails from the court and from PACER Pro would be an issue. Um, and um, if they did have an issue, they would have called me or stopped by my office. I have not gotten either one of those happen to me. I think that since they get the actual PDFs, it crosses out everything. Uh, you know, they were used to getting doubles from us anyway. Like, they would get it from someone from my office. They would get the hit without the documents, and then we would come along, clean it up, and we would then forward the hit again. You know, our fear is leaving out the partner. We don't want him or her not to get it either. Um, so I, I think it's better this way because they could see one's coming from the court and one's coming from Pacer Pro. So my thought process is that, oh, it's from Pacer Pro. It's got the documents attached. Um, and I haven't heard anything um, that make, made, makes me believe that they don't like the service. Well, you know, ours were accustomed to duplication already anyway because they would get the ECF and then the secretary would download it to an email and she would send it out. So they were still getting it twice. They're getting it twice now. They're just getting it faster. But for the most and there's really no change for them in email. Right. There's no additional emails for them, so it's not like they're getting something in addition to what they're used to, right? Right, because it's just coming from right. Pro. Right. But typically the attorneys don't actually open those documents. They may look at the email to see what it is, but they are not about to download those documents, trust me. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's kind of, you know, getting back to your point again, Bob, about risk management, you know, when you get the emails that come in from the court, they give you a very generic description of what was filed. And, you know, attorneys are using historically those emails to kind of monitor their litigation, and they're making split-second decisions on the descriptions of what was filed. In the case of Sidley Alston, when the initial filings came out, it all appeared to be rather benign. You know, their post-trial motions for new trials had all been granted with respect to being filed under seal. And so as far as they were concerned, there was nothing new to look at or no need to even click on the order. Um, but if the PDFs had actually been attached and they'd opened them up, it would have been very clear to them right away that the motions had all been denied during their 30-day window to appeal. And so having the PDFs right there, you know, in the same instance, more or less, when the court's notice comes out, you're now putting your attorneys into a much better position with respect to, you know, making that kind of internal decision making. Important, not important. Need to take a look at it later. Yeah. Dale, uh, do you have anything to add to this in terms of how your firm is distributing these uh, or using the different email services? Uh, not really. Uh, all the attorneys are pretty self-sufficient here, and um, so yeah, I haven't had any. Uh, feedback in that sense. You know, we, we've talked a couple of times uh, during this uh, program about the, the naming conventions for these files, uh, and uh, there was a reference to the fact that Pacer Pro uh, renames these files from how they come from the court. Could you explain that a little bit, Gavin, what you do? Sure. So, I mean, the court gives you a very generic description of what was filed. Oftentimes, you know, it says uh, temp underscore, I don't know, dot PDF. And what we do on our end, um, we have two slightly different naming conventions. One for the PDFs that come out attached to your emails. And as you can see here, uh, the document is entitled first with the date of the filing itself. And then we grab the first couple of words that are pulled from the docket entry description. So that's kind of oftentimes the most helpful is the first three or four words in the docket entry description as to what it is. And then you have the actual docket number itself, whether it's an attachment. So here it's 456-1 two, three, et cetera. Um, so we try to keep it, you know, pretty um, uniform, but also easy to read. And Peggy, you alluded to the fact that that actually is pretty close to your, your forms. It's pretty close. Convention. The only thing is after the date, we put the client name, and then we have our own set of abbreviations for the various names. We wouldn't spell out all the words. We, we have our own abbreviations. That's why I said it is so close to us already, it's very easy to fix, very quick. Yeah. We drop well, in the name of the client and just reduce it to uh, abbreviations. Good. Evan, what do you do about that? Do you stick with the names uh, as they come in, or do you have your own naming conventions that you use? We, we actually, since everything's saved to the DMS before it gets into our docketing software, we um, 
actually have to shorten the name because it only allows so many characters. Um, but we do use the document number and as many characters as we can fit in for the name, then drop it in the DMS and then attach it to the entry in our docketing program. Much less work than having it either saved as temp underscore show or, you know, document dot PDF. It's, you know, you just, you don't know. So it's easier to save it and figure out what it is rather than having to go back into every single one, naming it. It's just, it, it's much faster, much easier. Bill, how about you? How does your firm handle that? Dale, are you still with us? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. What was that question? I, I was oh, asking yeah, I said, uh, on the naming conventions how your firm handles that. Do you use the uh, name, the file names as they come in, or do you apply your own conventions to them? I'm pretty sure they're keeping the same file names as they come in. That's my understanding. Uh, there is a question here which I think only Gavin can answer, <laughs> uh, asking how does Pacer Pro service compare to Courtlink or... Uh, Bloomberg Laws docketing services. I'm happy to uh, jump in on that, but you know, Evan, I know you've got a lot of experience looking at other, um, you know, Courtlink services and BLaws and a couple others, you know, in terms of alerts and the rest of it. Uh, would you like to respond to that, or would you like me just to kind of jump in with my general impressions? Sure. Um, Courtlink and BLaw, they don't have the real-time ECF notifications that Pacer Pro has. Um, and in comparing them to, I know there's another one out there that also does this service. I always believe, and I use BLaw as well, but not not for the same thing that I use Pacer Pro for. It's a lot of fluff. Um, I told Gavin this. I think one of our first conversations was that a lot of people like to promote their own business. I understand that, but to be honest, I already pay for it. I already think it's great. You don't got to promote it to me. The Pacer Pro comes. Hey, it's Pacer Pro, and here's your hit. Um, the, and I mean, I'm sure, um, you guys will talk about price and the, you know, Pacer Pro comes so far lower in price compared to these others that it, you know, for me to get approval of the numbers that I got without any hassle, without any committee oversight and everything, and for me telling them what they can do for us and it was no issue for me, that, that tells you, um, that it, that it, no, nowhere compares um, to the pricing structure that these other folks have out there. Yeah, I mean, I would just say, you know, the, uh, uh, Courtlink and uh, Bloomberg Law, you know, really what their primary, you know, in terms of what I've heard from all the clients I've talked to, uh, those services are used for their alert features where people are trying to find out about new litigation, something that uh, may have just been filed so they can potentially go and pitch business to that client. Whereas, you know, Pacer Pro is really focused on case and document management for the stuff that you're working on. And so, you know, you have a much better idea of what it is you're looking for. Um, you know, and also those uh, services are really plugged into kind of more legal research, which we're taking our company to, but we're not there right now. So those are kind of the fundamental differences about what we're doing. I mean, and also CourtLink and B-Law has some state court coverage, whereas we're just strictly in the federal courts. Thanks. Uh, question for Evan. Uh, how do you manage the ECF list? Do you set up alerts for every new case? Well, it all depends. If if we are involved in the matter, we use the accounts a different way, I think, than others might. I have a main account for cases that we follow. Um, and if we're on the case and I add the attorney um, to the distribution list for that case, um, but if they are following something on their own, and they don't want us to um, review the uh, the incoming emails, then I set it up on their account or they can set it up on their own. Um, it seems much easier that way. I mean, why they could they can manipulate their cases any which way they'd like. Um, I got an email from a, a lawyer, I think, two weeks ago, and he forwarded me a notice from PesaPro, and I was amazed that, you know, because he's not that, technologically advanced that he actually set it up himself and he and he did fine. He had a question about a document that he got um, notification about. Um, but that's the way I do it. it. It seems much easier that way. I don't know if I answered your question or not, but uh, let me know. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's fine. I, uh, I, I do want to make sure we leave time to get to the uh, 
pricing discussion. There is a question here on just docket fish question mark. Uh, so I guess the question is, how does docket fish compare to Pacer Pro? Um, Jeff, I would say, you, uh, sure, that? sure. I mean, docket fish uh, does something similar. I mean, they rely uh, in terms of their searches on the case locator service, which is not as up to date as the individual district and bankruptcy court websites. Um, they you know, have some ability to do some of the bulk downloading. They certainly haven't done any work with regards to pulling back these free look PDFs. Their focus is more on search rather than on case and document management. It's probably the best way to distinguish us from them. All right. Um, we've got about five or six minutes left. Is this a good time to bring Anna on to talk a little bit more about pricing? And then if we finish up with her and have time for more questions, we can take a couple more questions. Sure. Uh, Anna, are, are you able to talk? Okay. No. Um, <laughs> no. If you, if you, uh, there's a number you could dial in. Okay. Well, I'll go ahead and take it. Um, so, uh, for firms interested in uh, trialing Pacer Pro, we offer two week trials. Uh, what we see tend to work best is starting with a smaller group of people between five and ten users, uh, with a cross section between attorneys and uh, support staff, paralegal secretaries, as well as the docketing departments. Um, you know, and that way everybody gets to see what it's like to get these free look PDFs, to run searches across Pacer Pro, to set up um, alerts in cases that they're um, following, et cetera. Uh, we have a special offer uh, for those of you from the AAAL. Uh, it's going to be available till October 15th. Uh, anybody who signs up uh, on it before October 15th who's part of the AAAL and attending today's call, um, the first 1,000 seats, and this doesn't matter if it's across one firm or multiple firms, the first 1,000 seats we're going to um, sell at $10 a month as opposed to our normal uh, $30 to $25 to $20 a month per user seats. So this is a great deal. So if you guys are looking to try Pacer Pro out and want to really um, get moving, we strongly encourage you to get moving ASAP. Could you uh, also just clarify uh, the difference between what – you're charging and what PACER is charging here, because there are still PACER charges involved. Yes, so you still incur your normal PACER charges for things like um, updating a docket sheet. Um, and that's anywhere from 10 cents to $3, depending on the length of the docket sheet, how many pages it prints out to. You'd still be charged for running searches across, you know, the individual district courts or bankruptcy courts where you're looking for a party name. PACER charges, again, anywhere from 10 cents to, um, you know, three dollars, sometimes more, depending on the total number of results that come back. Um, again, it's just based on the number of pages it actually prints out to. And then there's also the charges, obviously, for the documents. If a document hasn't been pulled back into our system, you're going to be paying your standard pacer fees, which are ten cents to three dollars. But what's great is we're getting tons of users on the system, and we're downloading tons of documents per month. So you know, there's a lot of stuff, particularly for the more uh, important cases, more active cases, where we've already got PDFs there. I wonder if we could turn in the few minutes we have remaining to, to the panelists and just ask uh, each of you whether there's anything else that we really haven't talked about here that you, you wanted to say about Pacer Pro uh, in these last, last few minutes. So, uh, Peggy, uh, how about you? Is there anything more that you wanted to add to the discussion? No, I think we've pretty well covered it from here. I mean, we're very happy. I haven't mentioned the searches because that's primarily done by our attorneys and paralegals. But management was happy with the cost reduction. The secretarial staff is utterly delighted that the time we saved not downloading documents. The attorneys are happy because they get the documents immediately. But we also have paralegals who are following cases where we have a case against someone and there are two other cases against them. So they're using Pacer Pro to follow cases. So it's being widely used across a wide strata. I spent my time talking about the, the parts of it that I personally use because I could see from uh, the other people here that my experience is totally different from the others. So I think mine was probably a slightly different aspect. Yep, and, that, and that's part of the value you bring to this panel. We appreciate it having you on here. Uh, Evan, how about you? Were there uh, other points that you wanted to raise about Facebook Pro that we haven't touched on yet in this hour? Well, I, I got to say that I rarely use Pacer anymore. Um, I go directly to Pacer Pro um, every day, numerous times a day. Um, the search feature is great. Um, I think one of the other great features is clicking on as many documents as you like and downloading them. I was doing it on my um, iPhone a couple nights ago, coming home from work, waiting for the bus. Um, it's just, it's great. 
and I'm, I'm an on-the-go person. I'm totally seamless. People don't know if I'm in or I'm out. I'm actually out of the office today, and people didn't, don't even know because, you know, that's just the way I am. Um, but I'm telling you that I, you know, only if I have to go to a court with that Pacer Pro doesn't cover, I don't go to Pacer anymore. There's no reason to. Bill, uh, and what about you? Is there anything else that you'd like to add to the discussion? I would uh, second Evan. I don't even use uh, Pacer anymore. Um, and um, other than that, uh, I think uh, we're all here uh, excited to see what happens next. Additional functionality. Sure. Yeah, one of the things that maybe we didn't touch on enough is we do have this new nationwide searching that we're allowing that's going to allow people to do meaningful profiles on individuals. And that should be uh, out and available to the general public in the October time frame. So um, there's a lot more exciting stuff coming. Well, we can do another webinar when that comes out and demonstrate that. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, well, I just wanted to say thank you very much to everybody who um, called in today. And, of course, thank you very much to our panelists. And, uh, Bob, as always, thank you very much for uh, a wonderful job moderating. Yeah, thanks. Thanks to everybody in the audience for the speaking.